Group 11 is an advanced stage zinc focused exploration company in the Republic of Ireland. Group 11 just released its latest step out drill results, giving them their best results yet from their Bally Wire discovery. CEO Bart Jaworski is here to discuss the results, implications, and the next steps for the company. I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. Please remember this is neither a recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Bart, congrats on the great results. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Martin. Appreciate it. All right. Can you give us just a quick, there was a lot of data in that one drill uh, hole you got. Uh, can you give us a quick highlight and overview of the key aspects of it? Yeah, I mean, we hit the best hole we've ever hit at Ballywire. Obviously, Ballywire is a discovery that we made two and a half, more than two and a half years ago, and we have 53 holes into it. And this is the best of the 53 holes we've had to date. And it actually beats our old record of 30 meters of 10% here. We got 40 meters of 10% plus 130 grams per ton silver plus 0.3% copper. So it was a really stellar hole. It was a 50 meter step out. And it really increased our strike length from 1,250 meters to 1,300 meters along what we already have as a 2.6 kilometer long trend of pierced, very robust mineralization. And that 2.6 kilometers is along a six kilometer perspective trend defined by four gravity high anomalies of which only one has been drilled to date. So that's kind of the, the overview. You're only halfway through the 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 trend you got there if not a quarter only because really one out of four is is really uh the, one out of four gravity anomalies has been systematically drilled I'll okay put it that way we yeah. are uh to your point we are starting to drill on anomaly d right now so there is one rig going there now but we haven't we haven't finished out uh drilling yet we haven't released any results yet we don't have any results yet uh that's all still in process so okay. once we have that uh that initial drilling done then we'll We'll be covering the C and the D anomaly, but the A and the B anomaly still remain. The A anomaly hasn't been touched yet. The B, we did, we did a yeah. one last year. We we did get sniffs there. It's in the correct geology. Everything's looking good. It looks like we're just on the edge of the mass of sulfide there. We hope to find more on the B anomaly as well. So we've just touched the B. We're just starting to test the D. The C is really where the, the bulk of the discovery is so far. Okay, and the results get back to let, let's get yeah, back to yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good to sort of provide that overview. But it was a 40 meter hit at 10 percent zinc and lead, and that's a really, really uh, a stellar, stellar intercept. We are here on the Rath Downey trend, we're 20 kilometers away from Glencore's Palace Green deposit, one of the largest undeveloped zinc deposits in the world. That yellow box there is the Limerick area of Ireland. I'm going to zoom in on that yellow box. You get this picture, as I say, everything in blue here is. Glencore and everything in yellow that you see there is South 32. And our Ballywire discovery, the solid yellow box there, is only 20 kilometers away from that critical mass, i.e. Glencore's Palace Green deposit. And of course, butting up against that is our own Stone Park deposit. And Ballywire, by the way, is sitting on the intersection of two mineralizing trends. So it makes it extra perspective. You know, that's why it makes sense that we, our discovery is there. It's at the intersection of the famous Rath Downey trend, which hosts the Sheen and Galmoy just off the page. And also this more, more northwesterly trend about the Palace Green Corridor. So I'm just going to dive into this yellow box and show you that. This is what we're talking about today. And this is basically the state of play of the Valley Wire discovery to date. And what I'm going to do is just zoom in on this blue box, which is really the, what's showing here on the, on the page is the 2.6 kilometer trend. But I'm going to zoom in on the 1.5 kilometers of that that has been uh, drilled in higher density and just show you basically what we announced on Wednesday. So I'm flashing back and forth hole 35. So you can see each of these disks is the actual mineralized intercept. This is our 3D model and looking down. Uh, so north is up and we're looking down here. And so this is the hole that we hit on Wednesday. And of course, um, what was interesting about that is that it yeah, turned out to be a 50 meter step out and hit some phenomenal results. That 40 meters is actually part of a wider intercept of 54 meters of 8% zinc and lead, near, nearly 100 grams silver and about 0.2 copper. So what I'm going to do now is show you the long section where that stripe is. And basically, we're looking to answer the question of what's here in the question mark. There was a big gap in our knowledge of, of uh, this long section. So we, we have a lot of good mineralization here on the left. And then it starts to pick up again in hole 28. And so we're wondering what happened here. So if you look at that, we, we drilled this hole 
And we're in the process of drilling hole 37 as well. So that answers part of your question as to what we can expect next. So hole 37 will be part of the, probably part of the next batch, depending on assay results, et cetera, and how quick they come through. But hole 35 is really the, the part of the, um, you know, that it was the, the part, the main part of the news release on Wednesday. So it was a 50 meter step out. And of course, a 50 meter uh, or 50 meter intercept of 8%, including 40 meters uh, of 10%. And that's basically from uh, where I'm showing my cursor. And, and that includes all the pink. The red is that 18 meters of uh, predominantly massive sulfide running 16% zinc and lead. That's super high, including 230 uh, grams per ton silver and 0.4 copper. And then the, the real hot spot within that massive sulfide is a, is a five meter zone. And a lot of those meter intervals are, are north of 1% copper in their average is, average is out 0.86. There's a lot of uh, north of 1% copper numbers in there and uh, a lot of really high uh, silver numbers as well. So again, sopper, silver and copper kicking within the wall sortion and then also below the wall sortion, uh, we have a, a copper silver zone here as well, where we're getting up to 1.5% copper and up to 600 grams per ton silver. So again, that in and of itself is great because obviously it speaks to the tonnage potential of Ballywire. You start getting these 50 meter thick zones of mineralization, you start racking up tonnage potential very quickly, you know, without having to expand a lot of strike, all of a sudden your thickness goes up exponentially, your, your tonnage potential obviously goes up with it uh, quite okay. With the thickness and grade, how does that compare to the other, I guess, world-class deposits in Ireland? Yeah, so, I mean, 20% or 20 meters of 20% would be kind of, you're there. You know, that that would be kind of a very, very good grade in Ireland. If you're getting 50 meters of mineralization, that's uh, that's up there, uh, yeah. certainly. Uh, so I, we're, we're certainly on par, let's just put it that way, on par with the Lachine Galmoy uh, uh, silver mines, uh, potentially. The one exception would be Navin. I'm sure Navin's got some 30 to 100 meter thick uh, zones of mineralization as well in there. That's that's a 140 million ton deposit, uh, and absolutely one of the world's largest deposits of its kind in the world. Uh, but certainly in terms of Lachine, Galmoy, silver mines, those types of uh, deposits here were, you know, and and uh, Palace Green as well. I mean, to get these types of intersections would be it would be uh, fantastic as well. And of course, to have the silver and copper with it. One distinction is Palace Green has no uh, no elevated so it has some uh, silver, but no no silver really to to speak of from an economic perspective or copper. So where the the distinction with Ballywire is it seems to have the highest silver kicks out of any other zinc deposit in Ireland to date that's been found, and certainly the copper as well. We seem to be in a hot copper hotspot within within Ireland. So those are the real difference differentiating factors, I guess. So anyway, um, that's that's the long and the short of it here. The copper silver is certainly kicking. And what it means really, Martin, is if we look at the long section, so just A to AA prime here, looking at the plan view, I'm just gonna take a slice and look at it from the side. And this is something from our May 8th news release, just showing you basically a, a section of what we've drilled. So we know this, uh, these holes have been drilled, those intercepts are, are real. And so what we think is happening is this. So this is basically what we know and what we think we might have, you know, so what we know and our hypothesis. And the lime yeah. green there is our copper target down below. And that's predicated on two data points. Number one, we're already seeing the copper silver, as we just saw uh, from previous slides in the drilling we have, and that's coming from below. So that's number one. And number two, we know from the stratigraphy of the area that there's something called the lower, lim uh, lower limestone shale. Down below us, it should be one to 200 meters below the wall source in limestone, the green unit there. And um, so here somewhere should be the lower limestone shale. And why that's significant is because the lower limestone shale, we know hosts copper silver deposits in the area. So there's actually four prospects or four occurrences, four historic mines, uh, including uh, two, sorry, four prospects, including two historic mines in and around us. I'll show you where those are right now. And that sort of speaks to the why it's so perspective. So it would be quite surprising if we're already seeing copper coming up from below, and we know that this copper uh, uh, horizon um, or a, a horizon that typically is mineralized with copper is right below us. It would be surprising if there wasn't any copper down below, but not that part of that potential is being priced into the stock uh, right now. Is that's basically what we're seeing. So, um, okay, we're actually going to just summarize first. Uh, I thought we had that coming up, but here is basically where we're drilling right now with three rigs. Um, so right now we're working on with one rig on the northeast and extending the mineralization even further to the east. 
so working on that so working off what we just uh what, what we just announced and I'm, I'm working off that the second rig is looking for the copper underneath the the sort of the lime green unit i was just showing and then the third rig is out here uh towards uh, it's a 1.3 kilometer step out so we're making some uh bold moves here by stepping out with the third rig 1.3 kilometers into an area that was historically drilled and showed some calcite bodies which we're also seeing along the trace of the massive sulfide. There's a lot of calcite sitting on top of the massive sulfide. We're using the calcite now as a vector for stepping out further towards the east. So, and I guess I'll finish off this, and I think I've got a slide uh, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. But first, before that, just to show you, we have a six kilometer trend, as I mentioned, defined by four gravity high anomalies A through D. And of course, the discovery that we made so far, all the drilling so far has been pretty much on the C anomaly. Uh, we just moved to the D anomaly with that third rig. That's that 1.3 kilometer step out. And the D area is very interesting because not only does it have the gravity anomaly, but it's got the two calcite uh, bearing holes, these two white holes here. And we have about another almost a kilometer away from that. We have a historic hole from 1999, which hit 14 meters of 1% zinc and lead, including a meter of 4%. So those are the types of mineralized intercepts we're seeing just on the outside of the massive sulfide zone at the discovery horizon. So we're hopeful we're seeing something similar here at the D anomaly. The B anomaly, again, we just touched with one hole last year. So we hope to go back there. We know we're close. And then the A anomaly, we haven't even started thinking about drilling yet. But again, before year end, we hope to have at least a fan of drilling on all on the A, B and the D anomalies before the year is out. So that's the sort of bigger picture. That's the catalyst. And um, I wonder here if I've got any more. No, that's kind of the end of the presentation. So what I was going to show is that around Bally wire, there's four grab, there's the four copper silver occurrences. One is called Ula, and that was mined in the 1750s. One is uh, Gortrum, that was mined in the 1960s. Denison is five kilometers away, and then Telecondra, 45 kilometers away. So if you put an oval around those, it basically shows a sort of a mini mini copper. Uh, belt within Ireland. And that's probably speaks to something special about our basement rocks underneath us. Um, they're cop there might be copper rich or whatnot. So basically we are in a, in a copper rich area of Ireland. It's the only place in Ireland like it. And uh, that's why we're so excited by drilling the deeper copper uh, hole is, uh, is, you know, we have a strong potential for there to be something down there. So hope, hopefully I've answered that without too much, uh, without too much confusion. All right. The the deeper copper holes you're doing, are those in the assay labs right now or, or queued up or you still have to drill those? And does that include that next, which looks like about a 50 meter, another 50 meter step out that fans out from the 35 that you just did? Is that the one targeting the, the deeper copper or are there other ones? Yeah. So looking at this, the copper hole is this guy here, number 40. Okay. So that's basically stepping back and trying to intersect underneath, so sort of clipping the mineralization we see already uh, between these two these two green areas here, the copper zones. So notionally, there would be a copper zone here. So uh, hole forty is trying to clip a bit of that and then go underneath and yeah. uh, see if there's more of the actual, you know, the zone that we're really looking for underneath. And then we just started a second hole. Uh, on top of that, basically. So that's another hole that's in progress. We mentioned that in the in the press release on Wednesday. So that's number one to answer your question. How deep are you drilling those holes? Those would be about 500 to 600 meters deep uh, downhole down hole length. So the okay. actual, in terms of vertical uh, distance, probably about 450 meters or so from surface, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. So that'd be considered are... relatively, you know, not not too deep. Yeah, okay. And so what's the next news we should be uh, on the lookout for? So definitely hole 40. Uh, certainly, I, I showed that uh, hole 37 here uh, was on the, was very closely out and drilled after hole 35. So that's uh, sort of uh, in, in the mix. Then hole, as you would expect, these other hole 34, 36, probably part of the same timing. We'll see how it comes out with the lab. And again, hole 39, hole 42, those are uh, other holes that we're drilling. Um, and there's, so basically there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six holes here. And um, there's two more holes that are being drilled off the page towards that calcite zone that I was mentioning. That's that's 1.3 kilometers away from here. So uh, stay tuned. Is for that those. the zone D or is that? A, is... Correct. That's zone D. Okay. That is zone okay. D, but that's off the page on this one. 
Yeah. So uh, expect those as well. And we'll just have to play by ear because, again, all those things are in the lab. Some some holes have a lot more samples uh, than others. So that kind of based on geology and everything else. And so uh, and then the uh, return rates or the, the turnaround times from the lab can vary during the summer. Sometimes the, the lab gets hit with other samples from the rest of Europe or Africa or what have you from, from other projects. So we kind of have to contend with that. So we'll we'll just kind of do our best uh, to get the, obviously we try to get news, re news releases out the door in a regular uh, pace. So uh, stay tuned for that, but it should be a very busy second half of the year for news flow at uh, Ballywire. And we hope to drill eight to call it 10,000 meters of drilling. We already drilled 4,000 meters this year. So we're, we're well, uh, well on track to, to achieve at least 8,000 meters. So you've drilled 4,000, including what's in the labs are waiting to get to the labs right now. So we'd be expecting another four to 6,000 of new drilling to, to happen from this point on. Yeah. 4,000 meters, what we physically drilled, part of that is still in process and hasn't been uh, reported yet, but yeah, all that should be coming out in, in due course. Yeah. Yeah. And that second stage of drilling, has that been all mapped out yet? Or are you waiting to get the, all these results back? So you, you, you've got better intelligence to, by, by which to do the next drill holes. Yeah. All our, all our exploration is very iterative. So we don't prescribe too much uh, forward. Uh, we, we basically learn from each drill hole, reiterate our, our understanding of the geology and then uh, adjust as needed. And so yeah. uh, we'll continue to do that. But uh, given the amount of legroom we have left to cover the ground we have to cover towards the east and and towards the southwest, uh, there's still a lot more a lot more to do. So yeah, we'll just have to play it by ear. But I think generally we'll keep the rate that uh, that we're on right now for the foreseeable future, and that that should certainly come in at, at that eight to ten thousand meter uh, level. All right. And just to clarify, you you did state this in the news release as well. You're fully funded for this program. You're you're good for the rest of the year. Yeah, we had those early warrant exercises. We had a two and a half million dollar uh, private placement before that it ended end of February. So we're at four point three million dollars as of June thirteenth. So a relatively new number. And so uh, yeah, that's more than enough uh, to finish the year with, and then some. So that that will definitely give us runway well into twenty twenty six, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. So it's a it's a pretty good position uh, that we're in financially. All right, Bart, that's really great. Lots of uh, solid information there. Any final uh, thoughts or comments before we wrap it up? Yeah, maybe just mention that the Irish government has uh, announced uh, last year that they're investing 30 million euros alongside other investors uh, working in Ireland here or investing in Irish uh, minerals projects. So the Irish government announced that they're going to be in, uh, investing 30 million euros towards fast tracking or towards uh, projects that are near-term production. Uh, so I think that's quite positive. It just speaks to, I think, um, the uh, the support that we're seeing from the government side. And I think that that uh, appropriately named IMF or the Irish Mining Fund hopefully will grow uh, and will continue to invest in other uh, projects as well that are maybe further further away from production. And so um, very much welcome that and um, very much uh, thankful to the to the Irish government for that. So I think it's a, it's a positive thing to mention. All right, Bart, thank you very much. Congratulations on the news and uh, all the best. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much, Martin. Appreciate it.